Well, this week is kind of bittersweet. Yeah, it's the last week before Nate and I have to start school again. Oh, come on. That's exciting. You get to learn all these amazing new things. It's going to be great. Mm. I say this with all love and respect, Dad. You are such a nerd. This is true. So. <laughs> yeah, he's he's not wrong. But if that's not it, what are you talking about? Well, we got our first episode of a new Marvel series and our last episode of The Bad Batch. It's sad. For now, at least. One we door closes, season. another door opens, sort of, sort of thing, right? Yeah. I don't know if that's it at all. But anyway, we'll break <laughs> these both down after these ads specifically chosen to help you forget that we won't be getting any new Star Wars on Disney Plus next week. <laughs> this is Tatooine Sons. A Chuta Star Wars, Marvel, DC, and <laughs> Avatar The Last Airbender fans. Oh, yay. I've yeah. never seen the show, but we probably should watch but it. But we do need to be thankful for the show because that's Dave what brought Filoni. us Dave Filoni. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thanks for tuning in this week. Uh, if you want some really cool pop culture merch, yeah. we don't have any Avatar The Last Airbender we do not. yet, though. We won't. Um, go to our um, T Public link in the show notes below. We just added some what-if shirts, some yeah. really what-if shirts. Captain Carter. Mm-hmm. Woo. Um, go ahead, and, and when you use our link, anything you buy, 100% of the proceeds go to help a child living in extreme poverty through one child. So you get real cool pop culture shirts and merch and pillows, and you get to help a kid along the way. It's true. It's true. All of it. Was the name of the Porg on the Millennium Falcon? Force is strong in my family. What do you think his name is? <laughs> it's a big moment. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. Maybe Turbis? Do or do not. There is no try. Turbis? <laughs> Pablo, if you're listening to this live stream, that porg's name is now Turbis. It's a good Star Wars name. We're not done yet. These guys record an awesome podcast called Tatooine Sons. Everybody was lit. Nice Were you surprised at how tall Dominic he's was? Tall, he's a tall dude. man. He's big. It's kind of intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> um, when you walk up to him. Did you guys hear, you know, he ca- he called off the rest of his tour. After, oh, he did. Like as of Saturday. Oh, last no. Week. Why? Because he was getting dizzy while driving because he'd been Ooh. on the road so much. Did you guys hear what happened? Like he was mm. going to like drive all the way back across the country and do it in just like really short spurts. And it was going to take him like two or three weeks or something. I don't know how okay. long it was going to take him. A while. A lot longer right. than it should. A fan, a Star Wars fan, found out about it and is driving him all the way across Aww. the country to make sure he gets home faster. That's so cool. So he doesn't have to do it. That Aww. was pretty cool. Star Wars um, fan. There's still good Star Wars fans out there. Absolutely. And if you're, you know, if you're a fan of the Mandalorian, you saw those first, uh, the first season, episodes one, episodes three. You got Gecko, one of the bounty hunters in the bounty hunter guild um, that was hired by Grief Karga, and there's a lot of that character in. Uh, episode three, mm-hmm. uh, you mm-hmm. see him in there quite a bit with it. Um, we are fully on the bandwagon of make Gecko oh, canon, yeah. um, and get him officially recognized as the, with the name of the character, um, and Dominic being able to, uh, maybe even play him in a future episode. That'd be so cool. He is not dead officially yet. So mm-hmm. he's, so, so Dominic is kind of like either tell me that he's dead. Or let me play him again. It's, it's like what, Boba Fett. Exactly. It's like the whole Boba it Fett. It is. It's right very now. similar to that. So, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Well, welcome to uh, what show is this? Um, <laughs> this is, I'm Sons? pretty sure it's Tatooine Sons. Yeah. It's our only show. That is the only one we do. Tatooine Sons, a pop culture podcast. Um, yes. Not we, Star Wars. No. We've, uh, not, we've I mean, we do talk our, Star Wars. Yeah, we've broadened our horizon. But we did because we believe that pop culture is the mythology of this generation, that there is a story, it is written on our souls, and that these different myths speak to that story and that's why we talk about star wars and marvel and dc and other things um i'm the dad hi I'm dad David. hi fighter what's up guys i'm uh, joined by a couple of really awesome sons that i've spent a whole lot of time with over the last couple of weeks uh, <laughs> as we were in disney world and stuff like that sam how you doing today i'm doing all right I'm yeah pretty good. yeah what we're you talking, talking about what if what First if the episode came out it was really you liked really it good. oh yeah, yeah yeah better than i expected it to be really mm-hmm. i was really anticipating this series so it's be curious. Yeah. Yeah, i'm curious to talk about this <laughs> bb nate yes. how are you i'm good yeah yes good awesome. yes. what are you talking about you talk about uh yeah i'm talking the, about batman 
who laughs last part at least. The last oh, part. I need to know what happens. You will. Awesome. It's a very action packed finale. So, cool. Dad, what what are you talking about? Well, I mean, there's only one one thing a Star Wars fan is going to talk about this week, and that's the finale of Bad Batch. Sad face. Sad face. Sad face. Sad face because of the episode, or sad face because it's the finale. Well, because of the the finale. Because it's not, we're not yeah, going to get another yeah. one next week. Yeah, that makes sense. So mm-hmm. we were we were talking about it. we got to, we did get to see we were as we were saying we were coming in, into the show mm-hmm, we mm-hmm. got to see Dominic. He was in Orlando last Friday a week from uh, a week ago. Uh, right now he was in Orlando at Gods and yeah. Monsters Comics, and we went there to uh, hook up and see him and talk for a little bit and hung out for about an hour with Dominic Pace. And uh, he is everything that you expect him to be. He is a super fan. Uh, he is super kind to. Um, the fans that come out and see him. Mm-hmm. We had a great time. Some we people did. from the 501st were yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, Droid Builders were there. It was awesome. I uh, got, to, got to see him. And, and we wish Dominic um, all the rest that he needs. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, he's got a, a, you know, his episode in um, Days of Our Lives comes up in October. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. So it's coming in just, he's got to be in that and it's a bunch of other stuff. So, yeah. But we really do want to see Dominic uh, <laughs> back in the Mandalorian. Gecko. Come on. Uh, maybe he could be, get into a scene where he gets to like help rescue baby Yoda, Grogu, and he gets to hold baby Yoda. Mm. And that he would be like, he would be like forever. The, you <laughs> know, the, they would be like the one of the coolest uh, Star Wars characters ever. Yeah. Because uh, he's pretty awesome looking. Yeah. So. Um, would you guys enjoy going to Disney? I did. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was hot, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah, it was really warm. But I mean, it was nice. It was nice. Um, you know, not having to worry about the heat and masks outside. And outside, stuff. Yeah. that made a huge difference. It did. Yeah. Um, and then the shows, the fireworks. Yeah, show, I hadn't. I don't think I've ever seen that fireworks show at the end uh, at Magic. Kingdom. I think that's new from when you. It was little. amazing. It was yeah, it was really awesome. Cool. But you, Nate, we got to actually see some of the uh, like the pre-show stuff in in the different places. We did. Yeah. Yes, that was really cool. What was your favorite one of all of them? Because we got like Twilight Zone, Haunted Mansion, even even got to see more of the Hondo. Uh, Anaka. Well, yeah. I had seen it before, but it usually is just kind of playing in a loop as we walk through. So, like, as many times as I've gone, I've seen bits and pieces and pieced it together. But this time, like, they made it its own little segment. It was really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was yeah, your favorite yeah, one? Yeah, probably Twilight. That was fun. Probably that was the really entire cool. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The one that you were, you know, mm-hmm. so was terrified of before we moved it to Orlando. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. yes. That's cool. Um, and we <laughs> talked about it earlier as well. School starting this week. Yes. So you got, what do you got, Sam? What's your, what's your schedule like next week? Uh, starting next week. I don't, I know I'm starting Tuesday and then it's nonstop for the rest of the semester. I'm not sure when I get there. I think it's either nine or noon. Uh, I don't remember my schedule off the top of my head right now. Wow. But it's going to be a busy semester. Wow. 17 credit hours. Yeah. Four math, one physics. Yes. And the physics yes, professor sir. won a Nobel Prize. He did. All right. Congratulations. You're going to have a fun I'm semester. Screwed. <laughs> Although it's funny. I just got one of my textbooks in today. And it's the thing that's got me worried. I'm not worried about the math and stuff. It's this one textbook. It's technical drawing. I can't draw for the life of me. That's uh, all lines and rulers. It's a lot. If you've mm-hmm. seen it, you wouldn't be saying that You'll right now. You'll do fine. BB Nate, what do you got? You're starting college classes. Even bit, though you're, yeah. you just turned 16, yeah. we didn't officially wish you happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday, birthday. BB Nate. It was last week. It was. Um, happy birthday. You're 16. 16. Sweet 16. Did you like have your uh, sweet 16 dance party and, and stuff the like sash? that? the sash? Did you get the, the sash? The sash and the no. tiara? You didn't uh, do any of that? No, no, you didn't do any of that. All right. Um <laughs> But you're starting dual enrollment. Yes. So you're going to be taking college classes while you take high school. Yeah. Finish up high school classes. What mm-hmm. classes are you taking? For what? College. College? Stop. Nobody cares about high school. High school yeah. is high school. Um, so. Intro to Mac and public speaking. So. Oh, so it'll be an easy semester. Yeah, it should yeah. be pretty easy. Yeah. Public speaking. It's not like you haven't been doing that since you were 12. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah. And uh, we've gotten back into the movie theater a couple times in the yeah, last week. Yeah, nice. I'm going to let BB Nate. Yes. Uh, you're the DC guy in the group. I am. You know, 30 seconds to give your unbiased, unfiltered review of Suicide Squad. Unbiased? What do you mean by that? Well, just, you know, just whatever. Just, <laughs> just say what you thought of Suicide Squad. Unfiltered is the word I was yeah. looking for. Okay. Well, I personally, I thought it was good after seeing it, kind of merging onto the okay, like mediocre. But the more it sit, the more I'm like, okay, I really enjoyed that movie and I wouldn't mind seeing it again at some point. Just specifically because the nods to all the comics and the characters were okay. so okay. accurate to how they are in the comics. It was a very nice... Um, change of pace from the other Suicide Squad. It was a fun movie. Okay, so what's the difference with the other one? Why the is the other one, one so hated? The other one is choppy. Like,
like it feels like there's like three different movies going on a lot like the joss whedon okay. justice league okay it's dark as could be which is not the suicide squad in the comics okay and it's the the joker's in there but he has like three different motives throughout the whole thing okay. and there's a bunch of things that make no sense with the plot and everything so it was basically a film that was put together by people in, in the warner brothers executive boardroom yes. okay and this one felt more like the comics it did okay sam what did you think about it i thought it was it was all right i think feel like it had potential personally for me i felt like there was a lot of unnecessary stuff in it that kind of um muddied the experience for me uh if you removed a lot of that stuff i would have really enjoyed that movie i think i think it had potential for the story the characters were fun i feel like i from what i know of the original suicide squad they did a much better job at fleshing out the characters in this um so it could have been better in my opinion all right i um i did not like it how gratuitous the Mm -hmm. violence was in this movie Mm -hmm. it was over the top to the bordering on Okay, not even bordering. Like for me, way over the line as to what's necessary. Okay? Yeah, I agree. Um, and the language was the same. Uh, there was just mm-hmm. the vulgarity in it was just over the top. Yeah, I do find it interesting, Nate, being the, that you're the DC guy. You know these characters. You know the mm-hmm. stories better, and things like that. I have heard other people talk about how it's so true to the comics, and they loved it. Do you think that for those people that are completely uninitiated to these characters in the comics, that they may not appreciate this movie because it's just, it it makes no sense to them? And that's exactly why I think you guys didn't enjoy it, because you couldn't connect to the story, so you were like, you were paying attention to what was on the surface, which... If you could talk about it, the surface was violence and language. That's, it was that's pretty bad. That's how it was, the movie. But me, I was, I looked past those things and looked at the characters and the story and how accurate it actually was and just how the characters acted like how they do in the comics. And I guess mm-hmm. like Starro is a big deal character it's in the comics. Huge He's like the first mega villain, mega like yeah. creature villain or something. Mm-hmm. Well, that in the, DC comics. Well, that the Suicide Squad faces. Yeah. He right? was, oh, that the Suicide the, Squad faces. It was like okay. the big, the first big mission for the Suicide Squad was Starro. And so. So for us, that's, it was stupid. Yeah. But for you, it's nostalgic. It's, it's nostalgic. It's accurate. And personally, I am interested in seeing where they're going to go with it. Now, what you guys need to listening need to understand is we saw this movie Monday <laughs> evening. We have not had this conversation no, up not. until now. And the reason I didn't want to have this conversation was, first of all, I wasn't even sure we were going to talk about it on the show <laughs> because I didn't want it to turn into something where we were like, one of us was trying to, to debate the other yeah, person yeah. Or, or whatever. I really appreciate why you liked this movie now. Mm -hmm. It makes a lot more sense. And I've heard other people in the last 24 hours say that. And so I was curious to see if that's why you brought that up. That's awesome. We saw another movie. We did. Which I think we're all three in agreement. was fantastic. fantastic. Uh, Mm -hmm. It really was. We saw the Aretha Franklin biopic that's coming out this weekend called Uh, Respect. Respect. That movie... Is fantastic. It was really <laughs> uh, real quick, Sam, what did you think about just in general? I mean, Why did you like that movie? S- well, I'll be honest. B- before that, Nate and I had spent like six six hour, eight, I don't seven. Know, seven, seven seven hours, hours at an arcade. This was your birthday at present, PB. At a VR yeah, yeah, so. arcade, um, and I was very tired. <laughs> so I was hoping that the movie was going to be boring, so I could take a nap. <laughs> um, the movie was not that. It kept my attention the whole way through. It was really, really interesting to see like what happened to her and like where she like uh, her d- development and stuff and the way it ended it was it was phenomenal mm-hmm. really yeah sam or bb nate what did you think Music about it? Was why, why did you like it i enjoyed it specifically the story was great i love seeing all the aspects of this per- this one of the greatest entertainers of our time because i didn't know much about her story before this and so it was nice seeing that i think that from the person who loves film from my side, the acting was phenomenal. Oh, the music gosh. was phenomenal. The writing had a couple points where it felt a little off and you're just like, okay, that, that was, that was a bad day for the writers. But, and the <laughs> editing was a little strange too at some points, but overall, great movie. And Thank I really you, Leonard Malton. <laughs> and there's like six people listening to this show who knows who I'm talking about. Yeah, I don't even Leonard know who Malton. that is. <laughs> um, if you, seriously, if you, if you know who Leonard Malton is, tweet us about it on, on Twitter at Tattooing Sons and just say, I know who Leonard Malton tweet is. Tweet us at Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> Twitter I just got really yeah. old. That's just, explaining why you know who Leonard Malton <laughs> is. 
And then I can't help myself owning that Twitter that anyway. So anyway, so you liked it for all that. I did. Mm-hmm. I loved the redemption story. The I did yeah. not know about Aretha's backstory. Mm-hmm. I just like you said, I knew her as an entertainer um, yeah. with this. The horrible uh childhood issues that she had basically just yeah, just some terrible things that happened to her as a young girl. Um, and the abuse that happened to her and as uh, in marriage and, um, the addiction, um, that she struggled with and how they don't hide it in this movie. In this movie, they go from the perspective of Jesus Christ saved her soul. I mean, that's basically the way that they go with it. And, um, the, and the movie climaxes with, with the redemption story. And, um, it's fantastic. If you, uh, have one movie to see this weekend, um, I would suggest you go see, yeah. uh, respect. It was, it was really good. But we got one more we're going to see this weekend. We're going to yeah, see free, yeah, we're going to yeah, see yeah. on Sunday afternoon. We're going to go see Free Guy. Finally, we've been waiting for over a year to see this movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, that's going to be a lot of fun. I think we're looking forward to that. So, uh, well, we spent 15 minutes talking about stuff that has nothing to do with our show. So, I'll move forward. This, uh, the two part finale of The Bad Batch, in my opinion, was a perfect reflection of season one. It started off with a bang, but failed to end with a clear understanding of where this series is headed. Mm-hmm. We'll explain next. Pokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster at your side, kid. Rebellions are built on hope. Force is with me, and I am with the Force. If you live long enough, you see the same eyes in different people. So great. Yeah, the acting was fantastic. And the, mm-hmm. the visuals were fantastic. Mm-hmm. And Peacemaker had the probably the most accurate portrayal okay. from that. It was really cool. Well, I, you know what? I'm almost willing to let you give me some background and let us go see this again. <laughs> like and try it again. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. Because I mean I appreciate I, I appreciate that this is a movie that is getting unbelievable reviews. It is. It is from Dis- if it's from Disney. No. <laughs> Wait. From fans. So anyway, all right. Um, we need something to talk about as we come in. Well, we we just we did. just we, did. We just did. That was that. Yeah. That was it. Uh, yeah. Oh, so, nobody told me that. Exactly. That was the point. All right. So let's talk a little bit about this bad batch episode. <laughs> Um, Go back the curtain there. <laughs> episode 15, uh, Camino Loss, or 15 and 16. We didn't get to do a talk about it, but we predicted it would be a two-part finale. It was, because we know our Star Wars. Because we smart. Um, and this is our first chance to talk about it. So let's... Uh, initial reactions to the finale. Okay, first off, I have to mention this. I mean, we're, we're okay going to the spoiler territory, right? Everything Just go we do, this show is all okay. spoilers. The best part of this episode was seeing Camino sunny. <laughs> what was that? Yeah, that was weird. I'd never seen <laughs> that. Well, before. that was just at the weird. very end of the episode. It was. I didn't think that Camino that ever does stopped feel raining. No, I've never seen <laughs> Camino like, sunny. It's like so the cloning <laughs> facility is no longer in existence, so it stops raining. Yeah, maybe they produced the rain as like a, a cover, cover from the satellite. It's, it's a cooling system. That for the cloning and you can't facility. see it from satellite. <laughs> it took imaging. water cooled to a whole new level. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. I never thought about that. Initial reactions. Okay, I'll let you go. But seriously, this episode was great. Okay, I can understand. Let's think about it. And when we do our reactions, let's think about the whole, whole final. Yeah. The, the finale. I can both understand episodes. where people are coming from. The first episode was fantastic. Uh, the finale. It was action packed. I really liked it. I can see where people are coming from that the second part didn't live up to the setup of the first part. But I'm okay with that. I'm a person who loves more dialogue than action or just kind of. Let the characters breathe, give them good stories. And so it was really nice to see that in this episode. Loved how Crosshair was kind of always on the edge of everything. And overall, I really enjoyed the episode personally. And as a whole, awesome. the finale was great. I enjoyed the episode too. I, I did. I, you I enjoyed st- episode two my, or one? No, both of them. I enjoyed <laughs> both episodes. Um, but as we'll talk about um, throughout the show, I, the I segment, think we can all agree on. I think that there's some yeah. things that with this series that this actually reinforced for me. Um, but Samuel, what did you think? Yeah, I mean, it, it left me wanting in the end. Ultimately, it, it was it. It let me down. The first one, it set up a lot. And then in this one, they were just, it, nothing happened in the end. They just escaped the facility and that's it. 
No greater mission. Crosshair's still not a part of the team. I mean, yeah. nothing happened. Even going back to, um, you know, obviously going back to Rebels, the final episode of season one is is a fantastic episode. It's high energy. It's um, uh, there's big revelations in it with the who the Inquisitor is mm-hmm. um, with that. That's the first time we had ever heard of the Inquisitor origin stories. Right. Um, with that, knowing that the Inquisitors had been former Jedi, we find out that he's a former Temple Guard, all of that. And so that was a big deal. And then even in Resistance season one. Yeah. The finale like, of Resistance like, season one is one of the best episodes of the entire series yeah. as it overlaps with the stuff in the, for, in the Force Awakens. Mm. And so I think we all went into this final episode, the one that came out today, Mm -hmm. expecting something more than we got. We got character development. We got the close the close of um, the Camino storyline and all of that. But in the end, it just sort of feels like, okay, that was an episode. Um, Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's like, okay, this it was Dave Floney telling us the story's not over and don't expect it to be. Because sometimes season one finales like in normal primetime television, they give a way that this either show can be canceled and they end it, or they give a way for it to lead into the next season. Do you think that there was talk of not having a second season? Yes. yes. And so the only reason we... And maybe we didn't even... Even with the tag on with the uh, Lama Sue stuff. They could still <laughs> end it. They could still end this show. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It, it, it does feel like what you're saying, like a primetime... TV show ending, like which it could go either way. I'm not point. saying that this is a primetime television show. No, but so. I, you're using mm-hmm. it as an example. No, I think that yeah. the metaphor it works mm-hmm. um, really well. Let's talk about the episode. Um, we do know they're getting a season two. Yes, yes. and so that's exciting. Um, and we'll move forward with that. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that as we go forward. But you know, you start off uh, where this this episode, the finale episode, picks up right after you know where episode 15 left off. Corn uh, Corn Force 99. They're in mortal danger. Um, Admiral, uh, is it Rampart? I yeah, think. yeah. Admiral, Admiral Rampart is given the order to completely ab- obliterate the cloning facilities on Camino. Um, and then Nate, when Rampart asks um, a clone commander about the status of the bombardment, um, what did you think about the way that that clone gave his update to Rampart? It kind of felt like, oh, like he was sad, like distraught his that his home. his home was just destroyed and he was the one that had to do it. I mean, that's kind of just a sad thing to think about. And you don't know how many clones might have died on that station. They might have gotten them all evacuated, but there might have been a few that they didn't know. So it was kind of at the point where it's just like, okay, I might have just killed my brothers and my home. So, mm, yeah, that's that's. That's the uh, the vibe I got from it, too. I mean, if you were ordered to destroy your own home and not feel a thing about it, I don't think any of us could do anything near that. So, yeah, I, I mean, it shows that the clones still have a heart, regardless of their orders or whatever. Do you think that the clones are going to... Uh, the fallout of the destruction of Camino is going to affect the clones that are still in service to the Empire? I think yes. some of them, because we, as has been shown in this show... Some clones feel some way, certain ways about some things. Crosshair doesn't have his inhibitor chip, and yet yeah. he's all yeah, we'll talk about be that. so sure about yeah, that. We'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, Sam, the next 20 minutes or so are kind of classic Star Wars, uh, as our heroes and Crosshair, I'm not going to list him as a hero. Mm. Um, they make their way from <laughs> one harrowing situation to another. It's very similar to all the heroes on the Death Star in A New Hope, um, or through the oceans of Naboo, mm-hmm. Phantom Menace, where it's just like one thing happens, and, and then the next thing happens. They get out of it. The next thing happens. That's going on throughout for the, basically the next 20 minutes. What did you feel or how did you feel about those sequences? Yeah, I mean, I thought it was fun and it did feel like Star Wars. Plus, it was neat to see some like underwater stuff because we don't get much of that in Star Wars. All we've gotten is no boo. No boo. Yeah. And that's it. Um, so it was neat to see more of that and like the creepy big, you know, monsters and stuff. But I kept wanting them to get out of the situation so we could get somewhere with the the story, you know? Um, I don't mind those kinds of sequences, but when they're, when one of those sequences is playing, that's taking away from the time that something else could be happening, if that makes sense. Yeah. BB Nate, what do you think? I enjoyed them. I thought it gave some time for it to breathe while still having action in it. It allowed character development to happen without it just being a few people sitting around a table talking about their feelings. So... <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, it, yeah. It, it felt, it worked. It worked for Star Wars. It worked for these characters and how they act. And so I, I enjoyed him. Good. All right. Well, after they, you know, successfully navigate all these multiple levels of like video game like challenges, <laughs> it did feel like that. <laughs> it did. Um, Omega is kind of faced with a critical moment of choice for herself. Uh, Omega's cloning tube. Uh, so they basically get in these cloning tubes and they're going to propel to the surface and go find the Marauder um, mm-hmm. with this. Because the, the tunnel's broken off. Right, exactly. Um, and then Omega's tube that she's using to get to the service gets caught in some rubble and, and then the, it's kind of dragged down to the bottom again. And then you have AZ's um, AZ kind of comes to save her and to help get the, the stuff off of it and, and propel it back up. But his power finally runs out, which is a running storyline throughout. The it entire. gave me big hero six vibes. It did. <laughs> ah, that's true. I hadn't thought about that. Um, but he completely runs out of power and like disappears. Um, as he's uh, or floats back down to the to the surface of the ocean or the uh, the the floor of the ocean. Which mm-hmm. how did they make me feel bad for a droid? I only met like. Well, let's <laughs> talk about that. Droids? I mean, Sam, Sam. One of the things we've learned about Omega throughout the season is that everyone matters, right? Um, with that, and we saw that again here as she breaks out of her tube, um, to go rescue a powerless AZ. Mm. Um, how do you feel about Omega being willing to sacrifice her life for a droid? Oh, this is not uncommon in Star Wars at all. The connection between Luke and R2, or Anakin and R2, and uh, Poe and BB-8, like, I mean, it, it seems like this connection between droids and, and their, their, I don't want to say owners or masters, it's more like friends at this point, it, it is a very strong connection in Star Wars, and it makes sense. They, they, the storytelling and writing does a great job of, yes, they are droids and they have programming stuff, but they also have personalities and character that you feel for. Yeah, BB Nate, what did you think about the relationship there? I enjoyed it because, of course, I love droids. And so it was, mm. it was really cool to see that in this movie. It did give me very big, Matt, big Hero 6 vibes, but it felt really interesting about how Omega would sacrifice her life for a droid who, who might not even get power back. We don't even mm. know that. And so yeah. it was really, really good to see that. And I enjoyed that aspect. Yeah. So Nate, so she, she, you know, it, it becomes pretty obvious that Omega isn't going to have the strength no. um, or even the breath to make it back to the surface when she's trying to lug AZ with her. Um, Hunter realizes that and he says he's going to go out and get her, but then Crosshair, he pulls out his rifle and it, it looks like he's pointing it towards Hunter. Um, <laughs> you and I both had this really puzzled look on our face. Yeah, we were just like, happened. what in what? the world? That doesn't even fit. It felt completely out of place. Of course, Crosshair then goes and he shoots a cable into AZ to bring both that droid and, and Omega to the surface, saving their lives. Why do you think Crosshair chose to rescue Omega? Because I think that it's just matter. He's like, okay, I think he's still maybe has his inhibitor chip still. No, I, th- I think that they've I'm not pretty much established he's, got, he's removed yeah. it. There's a couple points, though, where they've had some subtle instances that are exactly like what Wrecker had. He's sitting down, holding his head in the same place that Wrecker was holding his head. Right. Well, maybe and there's some damage or some residual from that. Do you that. not see the scar on his head? That well, they took it out. Burn. I think that it's been established they've taken it out. I think it's gone. I don't know. Okay. I wouldn't be sure. Right. So, but I, I, I don't know why Crosshair would do that. We don't haven't gotten that yet. But I think that there just there is some good left in him. I mean, I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't think he's necessarily like a super bad guy. I think he's just on the wrong side of things. You know, even Hunter said just because we disagree doesn't mean we have to be enemies. You know, I, I, th- I don't think he's a bad guy. He's just aligned with the wrong cause. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, this is really in my opinion, probably the most significant plot of all of season one. It's this conflict between Clone Force 99 and, and Crosshair. Right. Now we've, just like you were talking about both of you guys, we've debated this before. Is Crosshair redeemable? Um, and is it the inhibitor chip that's causing him to serve the empire? Again, the one, whether or not he's in, we can debate yeah. that and find that out um, for the future. But Crosshair says in this episode that he's making his own choices, mm. that this is not about the inhibitor chip, mm. that he's chosen his side and he's chosen the empire. Nate, there are some that are suggesting that this reveals that the chips only uh, drive the clones towards what they're already built for and that Crosshair doesn't really have a choice. This is just his nature. 
he's he's the the good soldiers follow orders guy that's the way he was built he's got his orders and he can't really even make any personal choices in this how do you feel about that i don't feel like that's i don't know if that's where they're going i don't feel like it's where it's going and it's not really true i mean it doesn't drive them towards what they're already built for because if you think about it what happened to fives and um clone wars i mean he was just sitting there shooting some bad guys and then just shot a jedi because his clip his chip malfunctioned and that's not what he was motivated to do so yeah i don't i think the chips just change something so sam do you think that this basically establishes that crosshair is a bad guy that he is he is full-on empire and that's that's his choice and he's in full control of that and he's made a bad choice. Yeah, I think he's he's truly is aligned with the empire. Um going back to what you said, Nate, I feel like the clones do have their own drives and stuff. I mean, look at um shoot, what's his name? I I we said it cut. Not it's not common for clones to want to leave and start a family, but he did. Um, even at, in, there was the one scene on Ryloth where the clones, like, you know, put down their weapons. Only some of them did that. Yeah. Some stayed with the mission, you know, I, and they weren't ordered to, to do that one way or another. I think just the clones have different drives and thoughts and personalities with stuff. Yeah. And Crosshair really does believe in the Empire. Sam Hunter gives, um, Crosshair the chance to rejoin the team and lead the Empire. Um, and this is where we're, you know, the scene that we're talking about here, Crosshair refuses, um, saying that the empire is what he wants to serve. Um, he wants to be a part of the empire. This is after Crosshair was deemed unnecessary and expendable by the empire. Um, what will have to happen for Crosshair to come to his senses in this? I don't know. I mean, it's like a bad relationship you know he like, keeps getting abused and just keeps coming yeah, back I, I heard one uh, it was this uh, alex damon on his his breakdown on star wars explains breakdown of this mm-hmm. episode he called it stockholm syndrome yeah, so, yeah. So that's what it seems like yeah. um so maybe that's what it is and maybe he just needs to snap out of it and he'll come back to clone force 99 but i don't know i think that He's considering his options right now. I think that he's understood, though. Okay, the Empire doesn't think of me as a necessary agent anymore. So I think he's considering whether or not it's a good idea to stay with them. Maybe he but he does party. want to stay with somebody who gives orders and control. I mean, that's what the Republic did. And that's what the Empire will be doing now. Hmm. So he's just having to make this decision because of what's going to happen. It's that whole idea of you can't have total safety and security and total freedom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there has to be, you, you're giving away one in order to have the other. Um, and the more free you are, the less secure and safe you might be um, with it. But the freedom is part of it. And on the contrast and, is but- you'll give up your freedom in order to be safe mm-hmm. um, with that. And so, or secure uh, with it. And I think that's kind of the conflict that's going on there. Season two predictions. Where do you think that we're going in se- season oh. two? I have no <laughs> clue. Yeah. I, I, I can't well, they, even... we have the Lama Sioux. Um, okay. There's a so Nala we say. Might... I can't remember which one it is. Anyway, we anyway. got the, I think that will explain where, uh, you know, the stuff we saw in Mando and things like that. But other than that, for the actual Bad Batch, I have no clue what they're going to do. We still don't have any mission or drive for them yet. They got a new droid. Uh, Yeah, they have a new droid, which is great. But I really don't know where they're going to go. It's always difficult. And Dave Filoni can always pull strange things that you don't think will work, but actually do um, into any series. So We're putting a lot of trust in Dave right now because the series has has not seemed to... To, I mean, am I allowed to say that as a Star Wars fan? Yeah, live up to what it, we have. It, it, that it's kind of it's. It feels like it's it's two steps forward, one step back constantly mm-hmm. um, with this series so far. Um, from you know where I'm at is I think the characters of the Bad Batch they're great, um, but after 16 episodes, I like you guys both said I'm not sure where we're going with the show and why we're supposed to care. Mm-hmm. about the Bad Batch. It's kind of like, um, you, you know, Savannah likes ranch dressing um, yes, a lot, your girlfriend. Um, no, she's, she's addicted to ranch dressing. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> some people, problem. I've heard her say things like, you know, there's certain foods that exist just simply to be a carrier for ranch dressing. I agree with the statement. <laughs> um, with that. Season one feels like it existed simply to show us what happened to Camino. Yeah. 
And the Bad Batch, and the Bad Batch was the just a part of the story in order to get us from that uh, through that. And season two, right now, looks like it could be similar. It's just there to show us about how cloning led to Palpatine in the Rise of Skywalker, um, and probably connect in some with the Mandalorian, right? Um, as well on that. My hope is that I'm wrong. Um, and that season two of the Bad Batch gives us a lot more to care about um, with these uh, show's characters, but um, I will, we'll have to wait probably a year or so before mm-hmm. we find out with that. So, all right, you're up. Let's talk about I'm that the, the new series. Yeah. So, episode one of Marvel's What If came out, and it gave us a fresh take on Captain America: The First Avenger. Uh, Carter, she got pretty tall. <laughs> uh, Steve is the first Iron Man. Yeah. What? And uh, uh, Red Skull's ultimate plan involved a lot more tentacles in this one. And that's all up next. Yeah, and that's coming up after these ads specifically chosen by the massive Hydra monster who tried to conquer Europe during World War II. Mm-hmm. This is Tatooine Sucks. Fun stuff. It's review time, y'all, and we actually have a review Woo! this week. Woo! Thank you. Yay. You. You're awesome. Yes, thank you. So... um, <laughs> Giving us reviews is a very important aspect of this show, and that's why I'm talking about it. Because we're insecure and we need your your affirmation. Um, But also it helps people find the show and drives engagement up on finding more people to find the show helps our insecurities. Exactly. And it it also just helps people, if they look at the reviews of the show and see your glowing five-star review. And when we look at them, it makes us feel better because we're insecure. Um, It'll maybe convince them to listen to us, too, and maybe they will give us Review. And it'll so, help our insecurity. Oh, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so just leaving us a review makes a difference. And every review we get, we will make a small donation to in your honor to one child. That's more so important. That is our, very important. More important than our insecurities. Yes. A little yeah. bit. A little yeah. bit. Absolutely. Yeah, and this week's episode or episode, excuse me. This week's this review. Episodes, this week's episode's review. That's what I meant to say. I promise. Uh <laughs> comes from uh Jordan Bean. Yeah, our Jordan. Jordan Bean. Uh, he said, I enjoy listening to the conversations between this dad and his two boys about our pop culture. Their relationship provides the important chemistry that makes their discussions familiar and inviting. Oh, Aww. thanks, Jordan. Thank, Thank you. you. What a bomb. I won't, I I won't, men- that, but- I won't mention that you did that review while you were sitting on our couch in the living room after I guilted you into it. Um, <laughs> all right. no, we can't say that. No, we can't say that. So give us some reviews, right? Peace. Yes. Yeah. Be on your guard. There are older and fouler things than orcs in the deep places of the world. All right, then. Keep your secrets. Just landed on digital for purchase. The yeah. Movie? Oh, I heard it was the coming movie. out. It it just landed on digital like thirty Weird. minutes ago. I was like, they didn't even really give it a date, and it just came out a little bit ago. Hmm. I'm like, <laughs> it feels kind of petty right now. It yeah, does. there's a lot of like with the Scarlett Johansson lawsuits <laughs> and stuff. Mm. It's like they Yikes. literally last night, and I also heard that Scarlett Johansson is actually being considered for a role in the DC universe now. I don't know what she could play, but I don't know. Any They're going to choose her as Black Canary or something. I don't know. Yeah, that'd be wild. <laughs> her shooting anyway. would that be a her shooting? No, Black Canary. She's a singer then, right? Yes. Yes. All right. Yes. Anyway. Yes. Yeah. yes. All right. Yeah. So uh, Marvel's What If came out, and uh, I'm going to take a page out of Nathan's book and Thank you. Uh, you know, your uh, long Halloween review. And instead of just going through the episode, we're going to go through the episode and talk about the differences between it and the first Avenger. And thank you, Screen Rant, for coming out with an article that went through all the differences. No because, way. They had one for you? Mm, they had one for me, not, too. Because I was hey. worried. I didn't have to go back and like watch the whole movie. <laughs> the plagiarism from Screen Rant is It's not heavy. plagiarism. We love you, you, Screen Rant, and we're crediting you right now. They don't credit so. us sometimes, though. They have. They have. <laughs> it has felt like they have listened to the show before. Yeah, but we're like sitting it. here crediting it. Yeah. So anyway, yes. Screen Rant, thank you. <laughs> um, but first, uh, the first big scene is when... Uh, is the super soldier transformation scene, right? 
I thought you were going to say the watcher. I'm like, that was an inverse event. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> the, that was the what if moment, right? Peggy yeah. decides to stay in the testing chamber as opposed to going up in the um, observation room, right? Um, and then that Hydra spy, instead of leaving, I watched the uh, scene just so I could make yeah. sure I was understanding. Instead of leaving that bomb in the observation room, he put it in the testing area. Okay. Um, which was different than the. So uh, did the movie he, too. was he the one that moved things out Actually, of the Actually, that's what the article said. It's almost like it was his what if moment too. Because he was up, he left the bomb up there too. So things were a bit different there too. Um, but then he, you know, he, he blows it up, but he actually blows the place up before the transformation. In the movie, he blows it up after. I know, Cap I wondered that. Out. I wonder what so, Because he was courteous in the movie, but not in this <laughs> He was one. courteous. <laughs> so he he's wanted to see reason. if there was a thing. No, honestly, he's the it reason. It feels like all he's the happens. what if reason. Yeah. yeah. Not, not. Not Peggy. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Hydra Spy. So is he a variant now? Are we going to see him on. Uh, <laughs> he's the variant. In the void? The void? The void? What are you talking isn't about? That, isn't that where the variants Oh, go? the end of time. Yeah. Oh, but there's no I, end of time now, really, so. I'm confused. Anyway. Right. Um, so then, you know, the spy kills um, Dr. Erskine and Colonel Phillips, actually, the Tommy Lee Jones character, and critically injures Steve, which forces Peggy to hop in the thing so all millions of dollars of this stuff doesn't go to waste. Um, so then she undergoes the transformation and funny enough, her transformation exactly mirrors Steve's like her eyes open up and then she's like in the same position when it opens back up and stuff. So it's very similar, like mirroring what happened in first. Avenger. But it's different too. There is what? a big difference. If you guys remote what? recall, they didn't talk about the woman. No. Well, <laughs> that, that is, that does make a difference. But, um, in the movie, the first Avenger, you start hearing Steve screaming yeah. and they start like almost turn off oh, the experiment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She didn't scream. And she, she didn't do any of that. No. Well, she's a soldier. Yeah. She's tougher than she's than tougher Steve. than Steve. Mm-hmm. Um, but what happens is since Erskine was dead, he didn't give to give like he wasn't able to give that like final motivational push to Peggy like he did oh. to Steve um, at the end there. So that already really changes stuff. But if you actually, you know, throughout the episode, it still follows the events of First Avenger very closely with differences as you go throughout. So the next scene is that kind of like pep talk scene, you know, when they're like when um, Steve was getting the blood drawn and she was getting her blood drawn and hopefully get something out of it. Um, They're both getting like their criticisms, right? Uh, Tommy Lee Jones character Phillips talks to Steve and he's like, I was promised a army and all I got was one man. And then this Flynn guy who he's new. He wasn't in the original movie. Yeah, I don't he's know. a jerk. Yeah, he where's he? Jerk. So yeah, what he's was, a totally new dude. I guess he was just there to replace Tommy Lee Jones' character after he was killed. In okay. The um, so we hadn't seen him before, but he's basically that version. So basically, of the you're telling me they couldn't get Tommy Lee Jones, so they just yep. made a character. I <laughs> mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, this Flynn guy's talking to Peggy, and he's like, you know, all I got, I was promised an army, and all I got was a girl, right? So it's it's a very mirrored conversation yeah. here. And, and Isn't that also where Steve starts joking about you could be wearing a funny costume? No, that's in the next oh, okay, scene, okay, actually, okay, when yeah. she's sitting there punching that punching bag. This is like mirroring the end of um, Avengers. Uh, uh, no, no, Captain end, America, yeah, Captain America, America yeah, for the post credits. For the post credits, yes. Mm, yeah, but in this place, it's way or the like beginning of Avengers. Earlier. Or the beginning of Avengers. Because the scene is in both. This is true. Which, um, I, yeah, they were just like, how can we bat out the runtime? Just add the post credit scene. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so that's so Joss Whedon editing. She's sitting too. there flinging like barbells and stuff around while uh, Steve's in there, and he goes, and he's like, "Well, you could be. It could be worse. You could be doing a USO tour, wearing a funny um, costume, wearing a funny costume yeah. and having to smile." Which I mean, come on, we all know what <laughs> that's referencing there. Um, fortunately, she's the Star Spangled Man of the Plan, mm-hmm. baby. Um, so then the next scene, uh, we see Red Skull and the Tesseract, right? Which this scene basically was like a complete copy of what we saw Mm -hmm. in the first movie except it happened like right after we saw steve in the ice in the first movie yes did you guys get the impression that they were telling the story of what happened in america with peggy and steve and howard they were having a conversation about what happened with um Red Skull and and all that that scene while they were showing it, you were seeing what happened, but it wasn't happening at that moment. That they were just telling. The I story get, of yeah, it. I think yeah, that's, that's where they were kind of going. With okay. It. okay. Um, but a major difference we saw here is that in that carving that was holding the Tesseract, you know, there was like the the 
the yeah, tree yeah. of life or whatever. There was a carving with that Shumagorath character or whatever, which this is the tentacle monster. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. Which wasn't in the first movie. So there's another difference there. And then the way Peggy receives the shield is very different than the way Steve does. If you remember, you know, mm-hmm. in, in what if she was just, she was sitting there at the bar and, and Star was like, here, here's a shield. Here's your costume, which was her USO costume that ended up not getting used. He just modified it very similar to Steve. And he's like, here's a shield. Here's your uh, suit, you know, take it while well, Steve, like he picked out the shield. So it's interesting that Stark decided to just give her the vibranium mm-hmm. one already painted and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was that first fight with Hydra there. It was very different between the two because Steve, like he was in like some winter forest and then she was in, I think it was, where was that? Was that, um, it was like, um, like yeah. Germany or something. Yeah. Anyway, um, she takes on this whole like caravan of Hydra soldiers single handedly without breaking a sweat. Wow, breaking Cap, a few bones. From do you the think other that's because she's now. a soldier and she was already trained? Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask. Do y'all think that she's more powerful than Steve? Yeah, I mean, she has training and she's been in this life for years, way longer than Steve ever had. And so, I mean, and it it goes back to the story of what's the doctor's name again? Uh, Erskine. Erskine, and the whole good man, good soldier mm. thing. We haven't seen that happen with Captain Carter. We don't know what it's affecting. We don't know. Well, what we do know, and this is a played out in Falcon and Winter Soldier as well, is that the serum enhances who you are. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. We what saw I'm this saying. with yeah. with with uh, John Walker. Mm. Yeah. Uh, in that moment, he was a great soldier, and then just became more. But of he a wasn't a good person at all. No. And Steve was a good person, mm-hmm. but he wasn't. He was physically. He was nothing. Right. Yes. Right. Now you have Peggy, who I think we can all agree it's kind of down the middle is down the middle. She's a great soldier mm-hmm. and she's a good person mm-hmm. with it. And you see sort of the ultimate version of what Captain America can mm-hmm. be. Yeah. I mean, she, I don't think we've ever seen Captain America just taking a head on collision from a truck and flipping that the truck. That was epic. <laughs> I mean, she kicked. And then she did it again. Butt. Yeah. Right, just because she could. Like, like, she was having was fun, fun with let's it. do it again. Yeah, I mean, she kicked butt with that shield. Yeah. Um, and then you, we saw the scene you know, where she was rescuing the uh, 107th Division, right, with, right. with Bucky and stuff. It took Cap a bit of work. This was actually before Cap got the shield, though, so they, this went out of events for Peggy a little bit. But, um, you know, she had no problem getting in there. Uh, the resulting fight was pretty similar to, to Steve once he broke them out, but there was one major difference. Mm, um, major Steve difference. Steve flew in with the freaking Hydra Stomper. That's a big difference. Which was, I don't know, what did y'all think about the Hydra that Stomper? That was pretty cool. I mean, I mean I loved it. I mean, in the whole moment, now, the, is it the Tesseract that's powering? Yes, yes. it was being powered by the and Tesseract. like the whole scene where he like crushes in the cannon. Oh, the, just like forms it. Yeah, like, on the tank, crumples the barrel, and it blows up. I'm like, wow, all right. He just does. None of the characters mind about killing people, <laughs> and I'm like, nope. they're like, it's completely okay. So, does this make Steve the first Iron Man? I, yeah, I think so. Absolutely, and. It's impressive that Howard was able to come up with Stark, this Iron Man technology 70 years before. Well, he had enough power. You know, no. That's true. But why didn't he do that in the first Avenger, though? Because he had the Tesseract. But he it was, was playing a lot later. later. Was he it? He doesn't get the Tesseract yet. No, they don't get he the Tesseract get the to the end. Yeah. Oh, that's right. You're right. Yeah, because that's after they raid the, the Hydra base. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, so he's had more time to work with it, and that's where the Hydra Stomper comes from. Um, are y'all hoping we get to see a little bit more? Uh, yeah, I do. I think it would be fun to mm. see that. I'm hoping we get to see more of these characters in a total, so. Yeah, and then there was that whole, like, old school montage, which was very different, uh, I'll explain, which was different than what we saw in First Avenger. In First Avenger, Steve was, you know, he was on the USO circuit, right? And he was, you know, socking Hitler in the jaw, and there was the music playing, and he got all famous, right? While for Peggy and Steve in What If, it was, you know, it had that old school montage, but instead of them going around the USO circuit, they're oh, kicking true. butt, you know, flying around from yeah. plane to plane. She's taking down planes with nothing but a shield while, you know, Steve is flying by and, and they're the the ultimate duo, like Iron Man and Captain America, but even closer in a way. And it's cool, though, to see Iron Man and Captain America not at odds with each other. Because mm-hmm. even from the very beginning in the Avenger yeah. movie, they don't like each other. They don't respect each other. They don't trust each other. Right. They work together, but it's kind of an uneasy friendship. And then it goes out of control in Civil War. Mm-hmm. Um, this one, I mean, they're 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 falling in love. 
Right. Throughout this, this is show. their dance, is what they were saying. This exactly. Exactly. Dancing. And so it's fun to see what could have happened had Iron Man and Captain America worked together, like mm. with with trust mm. and that type of thing. So. Yeah, and I think this also kind of goes back to why Peggy's a, a stronger Captain America. At this point, for Steve in the first Avengers, he hasn't seen any action except for what little happened after he got the serum. Right. While in this, she's already done you know, 10 times more what he has, which I think strengthens her even more. Right. Um, and then we saw another mirror moment with the, that like intimate conversation in, um, the first Avenger, Steve and Peggy share that kind of tender moment after Bucky's, uh, death, you know, and he's like, you know, Steve's like, I can't get drunk and stuff. And Peggy motivates him <laughs> to, uh, to, to I thought that she was getting Hydra. drunk and it was bothering me. In this one, I'm like, no, that doesn't fit. She and then can't she get mentions drunk. it. Yeah. <laughs> so. um, but the, in what if this, this same kind of conversation happens? But it's actually before the attack on the train even happens, um, and it's just you know she's just dealing with this mantle of being um, Captain the Carter of it. And instead of Peggy being the emotional support for Steve, Steve's being the su- support for Peggy. And the whole conversation is much more upbeat, and there's a lot more of like a connection. Mm. Well, yeah, because Bucky one. hadn't just died. Yeah, so that kind of would put a damper. That on does things. change the dynamic slightly, just, just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. um, and then there was that attack on the train, which was probably the most like in your face like t- toying with us scene of the whole episode right because we all know what happens in this that scene, wasn't right? good so they they get to the train they jump on you know steve comes in the front he's like stop slowing it down with his hydra stopper and they're all jumping on top of the train and as soon as they land on the train um bucky slips and we're like oh here it is here, <laughs> here he goes and then he's Peggy, hanging there. Right. And Peggy catches him and pulls him back up and he's like, fine. No, and he's like, off. oh, man, you could have ripped my arm off. I, that was not right. That was a cheap blow. That was a cheap move. <laughs> that wasn't very nice. <laughs> and then Steve, Steve blows falls. up and he goes down the mountain. We're like, up. oh, I guess he's this version of uh, this universe's version of Winter Soldier. Now. I really thought that's where Me they were too. going. I think everybody was supposed to think that that's where they were going with that. Um, but as we found out later, that wasn't the case. Um, but what did y'all think about like them toying with us there? And just, they were just, just like, how much fun can we have with this scene? And so they just went with it, which is what I've heard of the whole writing room of the series. They're just like, do whatever you want and put it on paper and just send it. He's That's like send how it is. They're like, they gave one rule for Spider-Man and it was just make a good Spider-Man story. And that was it. Mm. Like... Because that's what all they're wanting. They're wanting weird, wacky stories just to tell. Because but I like how they're telling a weird, wacky story, but it's also like mirroring the events. Of yeah, the first I'm movie not too. quite sure how. Like, they're, all the other ones seem to fit. Like the ones I'm thinking. I don't of. know how they're going to fit zombies. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know how they're going to fit that. Maybe Age of Ultron. Is that the or one something? that they took out? Because they took out one that was too dark. No, they they that was before they the trailer didn't, and stuff. They didn't oh. do an episode because it was too dark. Oh, okay. Um, they didn't even finish it, but. Mm. That that you know that that was the one everybody wants to see. Yeah, right like now we're all like <laughs> release show it. We're like on. you already have a TV fourteen show, so yeah, just that was surprising. It. Yeah, I wasn't expecting. I mean, it didn't. I don't think it. Well, they should, it just, just, they should just. Well, they can't just produce it. But. They had they had language a little bit, and I mean, just the the body count that Carter like yeah, this one had. Yeah. yeah, okay. So, sure. yeah, and anyway, then uh, they were entering the Hydra base. This is another moment where Peggy out. You know, upstages Steve. She goes in there, beats the crap out of all of the Nazi soldiers, and then the guys come in. Like, she's like, hey, yeah, y'all. This sequence felt like the Captain America First Avenger Wii game. Yeah. (laughs) I don't have any idea what you're talking about. That's just a connection between the two of us that probably nobody else will get. You guys just had a moment. That was the moment. All right. Anyway. Um, So then, you know, they, they get in there and. In in uh, First Avenger, Steve was actually captured, if you don't remember. Oh, yeah. And Howling Commandos had to come in and break him out. In this, nope, Peggy had no problem getting in there and just took everything down. She's tough. Um, and then there was that final battle, which was probably the scene that was the most different from <laughs> the entire show, right? Yes. In the, in, um, the First Avenger, Steve takes on Red Skull one-on-one while they're in that Valkyrie ship, right? Until Red Skull is you know, taken by the uh, Tesseract to what we found out later was Vormir. Um, And what if Peggy, Steve and the commandos fight uh, Shuma Gorath that has just recently killed Red Skull, which, you know, I guess he's not going to be on Vormir anymore. Um, 
We're not also not told why Red Skull's plans changed from the for, the um sorry the first. Well, he doesn't have the tesseract. Yeah, he didn't have the tesseract. So, and then he, well, well, no, he no, back. he had the tesseract. He got it back. Yeah, he had what was the scientist's name? Scientist dude. Toby. Oh, his name's shoot. Toby in the real world. Oh yeah. Uh, Seriously, his first name is Toby. I Zola? can't remember. It is Zola. Zola. Yeah, yes. that guy. He wasn't there for most of the movie. Uh, that's true. They he was there him. for a lot of the movie, and he helped further things along with that, with weapons. But and he was the he... one that he, he was the one that came up with the weapons. So, so why did he decide to go from weapons to opening up a portal? And because he didn't have the scientist. Us? Because it's cool. Because right, Arnim Zola was the one that came up with the weapons. You could bring a giant head. Hydra monster in. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I guess that's multiverse. cooler than a gun. It is the multiverse. It doesn't freaking matter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's a DC fan coming out. Um, so then the scene ends with Peggy forcing Shumagorath back into the portal, right? Because she's the only one strong enough to do I'm it. I'm just impressed that you can pronounce that word. Shumagorath? That's like some of those names in the Old Testament right there. <laughs> yeah. I, I could be completely wrong with the pronunciation. It could be it? Shuma, it for me. Shuma Goroth. I don't know. Shuma Goroth. Shuma. That's, Shuma very, that's, that's very, very Hebrew. Very Shuma. Hebrew. Shuma. 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 Anyway, yeah. um, as she's forcing him into the portal, she's telling Steve, you know, she owes him a dance and stuff, mirroring what happens at the end of, oh. of um, the first Avenger. And then she goes in the portal too, and it closes end episode or so we think yeah. and then there's the end credit scene sort of where it, it was kind Which, of mixing the end of the first avenger and avengers actually mm-hmm. where they were opening up a portal but instead of loki coming out of the portal it oh, was true. peggy coming Which, out of the portal. something a little weird about that the reason that cap lived so long was the fact that he was stuck in ice right i think what happens is in that dimension time, time- Stopped or didn't or moved wherever so she much went. Slower. Time didn't happen, and she just came right back. Yeah, yeah, it was it's like weird. or it moved like way slower. Like it was maybe in a couple seconds for her, but it was seventy years right. for us. Right? I mean, come on, think invincible. Right? Yeah, I know, so, I know. Anyway, um, and so then the episode ended, and um, you know what we're talking about? Boy, anyway, keep going. <laughs> anyway, um, so then that was the end of the episode, and she's all like, you know, I missed my dance and stuff, like. Steve did. Um, Mom was not overall. Happy about that. I know. Overall, though, what did y'all think about this first episode? I really what was your liked general it. impressions. I really did like it. I am excited to see where they go with this series. Could it have been better? I. I mean, the writing was a little bit iffy in few spots. Um, but what? What is your face like that for? I don't, I don't Explain know. Explain your face, Dad. I don't know. I'm just. I'm just curious. It like, just it, it the writing was just in like I I remember a couple spots where I'm like okay that just felt really off and just kind of out of place but overall I really enjoyed it and they kind of had to change they had to take a two hour movie and fit it into thirty minutes while still changing things and having and making to explain. it so familiar all exactly the time. it was yeah. a very difficult aspect for it and I really enjoyed what they did. And how it was true to what it originally was. I like the animation too. The animation was cool. Yeah, I, the animation was fantastic. Um, I think the story was a lot of fun to see the the changes and the, the nods to the original mm. version of it. Um, it's kind of you know that moment where Steve's uh, was it was it the original Avengers movie? I understood that. Where he's reference. like, hey, I understood that reference. Yeah. it kind of felt like we had like a dozen like, of those oh, moments. Yeah. Oh, I get where that comes from. Oh, I understand the that. whole USO. Thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so uh, it was a lot of fun it was a great first episode my understanding is that from those that have seen the first three episodes that they just keep getting better and better and um Dang. if that's the case then uh how you know this could be pretty fantastic mm-hmm. going forward because this be. was a great start to this it series. was and i'm not saying that it was bad with the like, writing shoddy in a couple places like literally everything has problems with writing i just really overall enjoyed this episode and okay. i'm excited cool. for the doctor strange one of course mm-hmm. <laughs> is that coming up I don't know. We yeah. have no idea. I, don't I think even it's, know. I think it's I don't Guardians, think we know which what is the next. next episode. Is. I think I heard a rumor that it's Guardians. Okay. One. All, right. All right. Cool. Well, uh, episode one of What If was a super fun <laughs> time. Um, it, re- it gave us a really interesting take on a familiar story, um, and we know from the trailer that we're not done with Captain Carter just yet. Really? Yeah. She encounters Doctor Strange. Yeah. Remember? No, mm-hmm. I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Probably like yes. in an Avenger, a Mirror Avengers yes. story now. Oh, that'd be cool. Anyway, um, so be sure to tune in next Wednesday to see what new stories we get. Nate, 
Are we almost done with this story? Yeah, like I just want Bruce to be happy and okay. Um, well, oh, the, the comic the, book, the, yes, the Batman the, who laughs. The day is here. We're going to finish the Batman who laughs storyline. Okay. I'm so excited. So look, we just need to get to it because I really want to talk about this because it's great. Yeah, and it's coming up after these ads specifically chosen to celebrate the conclusion of our deep dive into the weirdest comic book series. Ever. <laughs> oh, they're <a> stranger. <laughs> this is Tattoo and <laughs> Sons. So, uh, got a review this week. We, we did. did. We sold a t-shirt this week. Oh, we, we did? have a couple t-shirts this week. Nice. So, um, yeah, the Bed Batch t-shirts Bed are, bitch. are going uh, pretty well right now. <laughs> Hunter? Rika? Tick, tick, tick. Ika? Ika? Omiika? Like tick. Did I get any of the others? Tick. I think that's it. I think those are the, the, I didn't do crosshair on there because he's not a part of the he's team. He's a bad guy. He's a bad guy. Anyway, um, so the, all, you know, all of that has helped us to be able to provide mm-hmm. uh, some additional uh, funding for one child, and we're super excited about that. If you want to learn about how you can become a superhero, you know, take the super serum, become a child champion, you know, an enhanced clone, whatever you want. Um, you just go with it, um, but not the Batman who laughs because that's a bad guy. No, he's a very, very bad, bad guy. Okay, he's like uh, he's he's. Evil. Okay. So if you want to learn how to be a child champion, go into the show notes, click on the link for one child, learn a little bit more about how you can change a child's life. Have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? Yeah, I can fly. I'm here to fight for truth and justice in the American way. People in this room, which one is A, wearing a spangly outfit, and B, not of use? There's only one God, man, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't dress like that. That man has no limits. Constructive criticism is a great thing. From a 16-year-old. And, and, okay, I can have opinions, <laughs> right? I, I appreciate how you share those opinions in a very positive way, even and though... I'm not saying it was bad. I'm just saying there was one scene, I forget where it was, it just felt a little off. It wasn't bad I mean, writing. Overall, you liked it the just show. just felt off. Yeah, I love the show. I love animated shows like this, and I am so excited to see where they go. So if Ash Bradley, nice if you it. listen to this episode, um, I apologize on behalf of BB Nate um, for his criticism. I can apologize for myself. Yeah, the, the <laughs> opinions expressed by the expressions <laughs> expressed by BB Nate do not really, <laughs> necessarily reflect those of the hosts. Wait, he is one of the hosts. Never the mind. other hosts. The other two hosts. So, all right. So, are we talking about Batman? He laughs we now. Are you DC man? We are. Okay, well, oh, don't throw that on me. Uh, <laughs> I like Marvel too. It's just okay. not as good as DC. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. So, we're going to be talking about the last part of Batman Who right. Laughs. Um, but first of all, I want to get your thoughts on the series up to this point. It's been whack. <laughs> I said it in the previous ep- uh, segment when I le- led into this. It's like the weirdest comic book series I've ever seen. So. Yeah, <laughs> right. It was weird. So we're just going to jump right into it. So at this point, Batman, we think, has fully succumbed to the serum and agrees with the Batman who laughs that Just letting go bad. of his past concerns is a good thing. Laughs is delighted to hear this and tells Batman that the serum he injected into Batman will turn red once his blood is ready to harvest for the final dark matter thing and then gotham will be all batman who laugh type of characters and stuff it's very bad um okay however they both know that only one of them will walk away in this fight so the batman who laughs puts a gun to his own head and he is willing to sacrifice himself for the darkness so okay so bad batman who laughs yes is gonna kill himself so bruce batman who laughs can finish the job yes okay um, do That's you guys think weird. Batman will let Batman and Laughs actually pull the trigger? Uh, if we're going we off Christian Bale, again? I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing, yes. if we're thinking Christian Bale, Batman, he'll be like, I can't kill you, but I'll have to save you. And he'll let him do it. <laughs> I love how you had a lisp. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to save you. <laughs> Batman has no limits. <laughs> Sorry. <Okay. laughs> You're so mean. Uh, the 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 person who absolutely loves that trilogy is crying inside right now. But um, suddenly, the light from the syringe turns red, and laughs 
shoots Batman instead of himself. Whoa, oh. he did the Uno Tris- reverse car. He did. <laughs> Laughs admits that he almost believed Batman had fully turned for a little bit, but he knew that Batman had resisted the serum and changed the light on the syringe manually to trick Batman, who laughs. Ah, clever. Tired of waiting, for, <laughs> tired of waiting, the Batman who laughs shoots Batman again right in front of the young Bruce that good Batman oh, took yeah. from the portal. That. Yeah. Um, That's pretty so, messed up. Yeah, the Batman laughs just shot Batman to kill him because why not? He's he's tired. But of doesn't it. he need the dark matter stuff? He can harvest his blood. It's so he can kill him. Ready. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So laughs then chases the young Bruce around the manor's grounds before being shot by Alfred with a shotgun because I, I just Alfred's a had cool an dude. Image of like Scooby Doo, <laughs> like the Scooby Doo run. You got little it's Bruce running like while that. like little yeah. Well, Batman who laughs is running. They got Scooby the little Doo-Doo. like you know Where young Bruce kind of does a like run in place thing before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's, it's a lot worse, though, because um, it's freaky. Um, and then Alfred being Alfred. Yeah, Alfred just with a shotgun, because he doesn't have a no-gun That's rule. one of the coolest <laughs> sentences ever uttered on this series, I don't, this show. Uh, wait, the is entire that history that comes from? No. The oh. entire history of the podcast, we have not had the opportunity to say... Alfred with a shotgun. Alfred, Alfred with, with a shotgun. shotgun. It's actually well known throughout comics. There's a specific comic where Bruce is talking to Alfred and he's like, you know, I don't like having guns in the house. He's like, I know, but you'll never find them all. He's like, I can guarantee that. So he's, Alfred's got like Alfred's all these hidden stashes. hidden in every yep. <laughs> right? He's like a, a, a Second Amendment rights guy. He's got, you <laughs> this know. British dude. He's got, he's yeah. got his NRA certificates hidden in his, in his room somewhere. He's like, I got my guns. What are you doing about exactly. it, Batman? So. But going back to the, this story, laughs, it, Batman who laughs is wounded but not dead. And then he tells a story about how Al, the Alfred on his earth also came close to killing him. But the Batman who laughs trapped him underground and broke him by torturing him into servitude again. That's oh, man. really He's messed up. Very dark. Very evil. Um, Alfred keeps the gun pointed at Batman who laughs. And then, surprise, the good Batman kicks Batman who laughs from be- behind him, his back, and knocks him he down. He wasn't He's dead. alive. Um, <laughs> Laugh says that he is surprised that the transformation hasn't taken a full hold yet. And then suddenly, turrets rise from the graves around them and shoot electric harpoons into Batman who laughs. Of course he's got of course. electric harpoon turrets in the graveyard. Because why not? Of course. This is yes. just... What uh, Kevin from Home Alone would be like if he grew up and had money. <laughs> like, <laughs> electric harpoons. Yeah. Are you finished? Are you want- hungry for more? Whatever he says in that one scene. <laughs> um, Batman then admits to Batman who laughs that he was right in some things. Like how the good Bruce, like how Prime Earth Batman, the good Batman, is the worst Bruce out of all of them, and that it actually does feel good to fully let go of his morals at some points. Then Batman picks up his mother's headstone and starts beating Batman, who laughs with it. Oh my gosh. So do you all think Batman (laughs) is fully transitioned yet? No, I think he's just really pissed off. Really, really angry? That's... all right, that's a yeah. trying, I'm, I'm visualizing this right now. Yeah, it, it's, it's exactly intense. like you're visualizing. It's, <laughs> it's in the so, rain too. It's so really a lot. Batman who laughs is harpooned right now. Yes. And well, he, he 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 just pulled the harpoon out of him. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. So he's fine. And so he's then, fine. Then. Yeah. yeah. Batman <laughs> is taking a headstone and yes. beating the crap. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. And then Batman who laughs says, "Save Martha." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Nate. <laughs> what would Martha think? <laughs> He's literally beating his the, the tombstone of her. Did he pick like that one, or did he just reach over and it happened? I think to be his he mom's? might have picked it. It never really was described. It was just if that he one. picked it, that's twisted, bro. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, Alfred walks in front of Bruce to stop him from killing Batman. Who laughs? But Batman pushes him away oh. and continues beating the Batman. Who laughs? As that is happening. The transformation takes full control as shown by the syringe turning red. No. And Batman thanks Laughs for turning him into a better version of himself. And right as he is about to give the killing blow, Joker runs in front of him and says, You're welcome, before shooting him in the arm, rendering him unconscious. Do what now? How do you shoot him? Like with a shot or with a gun? Yeah, with a gun. How does that make him unconscious? Because he already had like three other bullets inside of him. And he was losing shock. blood. It was due to shock. Yeah. And he was cold. And I thought Joker was dead. No, remember? 
Alfred revived him. Joker ran away. Oh, that's right. It's like that, like the Jingle Bells song. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, Jingle Bells. Batman Jingle Bell, smells. Batman smells Robin Lady. Hey, Batman be a lost wheel. Joker ran away. Oh. See? That, so the song was really uh, written uh, about this comic. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys expect Joker to show up again? No, I forgot all about it. <laughs> no, he thought he was dead. <laughs> I don't. Remember. I don't remember. I'm still trying to figure out why. Why, why did he stop him from killing Batman? Oh, because I guess he could use him. Yeah. Never mind. That was All a right. dumb question. So two weeks later, we see Batman is still. Yeah, Batman's unconscious now. Why didn't they is, kill him? Who Batman laughs? No, Batman. Oh, why? Why would they kill Batman? Because he's, he's the Batman the bad who laughs guy. Now. No, let me explain stuff. Well, though. then we're waiting well, for it. You can't God, keep interrupting. Right. Jeez. So two weeks later, Batman is still healing from the injuries he sustained that night, and a transfusion he received from his alternate younger self had almost completely restored him back to normal due to the blood's unique properties. See. See. Okay. But- so little co- little boy Batman's blood. Helps to, to because save. it had um didn't have dark matter in it and it counteracted the dark matter in his bloodstream. So they just kept like, you know, like they didn't kill young Bruce. Okay, no, <laughs> no, they just kept like pumping I'm blood just out of him. And, though Batman who laughs isn't dead. No, right? Joker isn't dead. No, they incapacitated Batman. Yes. Why didn't they kill Batman? Because he's good now. They could transfer him from the younger. No, Bruce. no, no. Why didn't the Batman who laughs and Joker kill Batman? Because Batman, who laughs, was beaten to a pulp, already unconscious. And Joker, why would he kill him? I mean, he, he was, wants to keep he, him alive. He wanted to keep him alive. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, Alfred okay. wouldn't kill him because he's Alfred. He's cool. Um, so the Batman who laughs is now imprisoned underneath the Hall of Justice, oh. and all of the dark metal slash matter that was used was melted down and used to restrain Batman who laughs. In so it. he's being held in chains of dark matter metal yes that's pretty cool it is pretty cool underneath the but hall of i thought the hall of justice was in space no that's the watchtower oh yeah you didn't know that no <laughs> i didn't either <laughs> so we're getting to the end we're getting to the last big reveal the serum actually did infect one person alfred but before I get to who it laughs. is, the Alfred who laughs. <laughs> just shotguns. <laughs> um, but before I reveal who it is, who do you think that person is? You said it. it was Alfred. You think it's Alfred? You think who do you think it Gordon. is? Gordon. Who do you think it is? I think Dad? it's the. I think it's young Batman. Young young Batman. Little boy, young, little boy Batman. Little boy Sam, Thomas. what do you think? It wouldn't work. Otherwise, the transfusion wouldn't work. Uh Gordon. You think it's Gordon? I think it's Gordon. Well. That person is Commissioner Gordon. Ah, I'm the yeah. best. Yeah. 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 Um, which then spawns death metal. Well, it's so spawns- the Gordon who laughs? Yes, it's the Gordon who laughs. No, he's just really evil and he's a bad the guy. And that's a whole new series. That's, who laughs. That adds into some of the tie in issues from Batman and Superman leading into Dark Knight's death metal. Which, when I said there was a weirder comic series... It's that one. Is that, that the one, one where they've got, like, the... Uh, Wonder Woman has the lasso of truth tied to a chainsaw? chainsaw? Yeah, and Batman it has rides a black a bat- lantern ring and rides a skull bat cycle with a scythe. And Superman has an arm that is infected with dark side. Yeah, that's the one. And there's, like, like all the Blue Beetles, like, Ted Cord And, and like, you thought Blue What card. If was weird. <laughs> it, this is What If put into it, like... It's insane. All right. It's really weird. Yeah. But, you know, I, I personally, I really love this comic series a lot. And Scott Snyder actually introduced me to DC Comics. So and it looks the, like... The guy that did this l- series? Looks like he introduced Dad as well, at least in the newer stuff. I knew you probably the read The Court of Owls stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was great. I did read that one. That mm-hmm. one was and the City of Owls. Did you read that mm-hmm. one? Yeah, I read okay. it all. Yeah. it's They're all it's great good stuff. <laughs> um, but, so... Scott Snyder will always hold a really special place in my that's fan's awesome. heart. So, Dad? Yeah, no, that, that that's awesome. Thanks for sharing. Glad that that's over because my head hurts. Um, mm. Anything else you guys want to talk about? Anything else? Yeah, so uh, Shang-Chi will be a theatrical only release. Yeah. I wonder 40, why. Yeah, 45 days later, they'll put it out on um, streaming. Mm-hmm. Um, which I think is about the period of time that it's been since yeah. Black Widow came out. So that makes sense. Yeah. It, it um, does I wonder if sense. they're trying to avoid a possible something that a like lawsuit. A, like, <laughs> lawsuit. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. Anyway, um, so the Suicide Squad director. Actually, what it comes down to is Kevin Feige yes. said, you're, you're not, not doing that again. All right. Yeah. So, so the Suicide Squad. Squad. squad? The Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad director, James Gunn. You, you know, Sylvester it, it sounded Soul. like he talked like this. You're King I, Shark. I, I King you're Shark. King Shark. And bird. bird. I love that. Um, good. James Gunn says he's interested in doing a sequel and or more solo projects starring the film's characters. Cool. I wouldn't mind seeing it. He did Blood a good sport. job. He's cool. He needs. I would mind like, that character. Bloodsport would be cool. Poke he's already Batman. doing oh, Peacema- Peacemaker's done filming. And speaking of characters and actors from Suicide Squad, Taika Waititi. Did you guys know he was in that movie? Yeah, he was Ratcatcher. Well, I knew that, but I didn't know beforehand. No, I didn't, no, know, I didn't know beforehand. beforehand. I just saw him. I'm like, he's in everything. Though. Yeah, anyway, his Star Wars movie is finally having the script is written. Uh, and has oh. a finished storyline uh, from it. And his quote, the way he describes it, he says, it feels very me. Is All what right. He's the you know, I, I, I'm i curious to see how Free Guy plays out this weekend. Yeah. I mean, he didn't direct that. He just plays. He's it. just in it. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, still. But, <laughs> like he was in Green Lantern. Um, mm. We don't talk we don't about, talk about uh, that. Even he, <laughs> they don't talk about that. Even BB Nate doesn't talk about the Green Lantern so um, <laughs> movie. Yeah, well, that's cool. All right, well, thanks for listening to Tatooine Sons, a pop culture podcast. If you had a good time listening, please share this with your friends anywhere. That'd be great. You can even share it with your enemies if they'll listen. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> and of course, the show is only a small part of Tatooine Sons. So be sure to like us on Facebook and join our Facebook group and yeah. follow us on Twitter. And I mean, we're on Instagram, but we don't really do a whole lot. I think I forgot it. the login. Uh, um, <laughs> so um, that tells you that. Yeah. Um, to get in, on, so do that to get in on all of the action. Yeah, and don't forget to follow the show on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss the next episode. And remember that if you drop us a review on Podchaser dot com, we'll make a donation in your under to one child, and you'll help a child living in extreme poverty, which would be pretty cool. What are we talking about next week? I don't uh, have bad. What batch. if to you have something to talk yeah. about next week? I don't. I got to figure out some Nate, Star what Wars. What are you talking about? You're gonna go you over Nate? death metal? <laughs> no, no, we're gonna change. No, it up we're a gonna bit. we're gonna do something different. We're gonna talk about uh, movies, the, the releases of the, the releases weekend, of that week, yeah. and I guess we can talk about movies I saw. Previews, previews, and, and stuff. Yeah, yeah we're, gonna, just, we're gonna just gonna have just some fun. Movie, with it. movie time, movie. BB, movie time with BB Nate. Yeah, yeah. we need to fun. like put on like some like slow jazz in the background. And be like, <laughs> yeah. Grab a, your tea. Let's not do that. All right. Anything else you guys would like to say? May the force be with me. May the force be with you. May the force be with you always. This party's over. I like that monkey. Don't get technical with me. Joy, please. Yep, yep.